back to the Nuclear Medical Report, and it's the time for Chris Harris, that's his radio name, our nuclear regulatory sa- uh, safety expert in nuclear radiation. Uh, the book is coming along really well, the ebook, and I have to thank uh, Chris for all of the emails back and forth and his amazing list of documents. Uh, two were sent uh, yesterday. One is sampling results of subdrain water regarding wrong transfer of accumulated water to the incineration workshop building. That's a long title. Uh, tell us about what that means. And of course, the other document, uh, we've got the PDF version of it here, uh, was basically a handout leakage from plastic tank on side of H5 tank area of Fukushima Daiichi NPS. And uh, uh, that's a, a one a four pages document. And uh, maybe we can go through some of the details of this because it, it just gets crazier in terms of what's actually happening, doesn't it? Chris, are you there? I know you were there a moment ago. Hello, Chris. You must be on mute. Uh, let me read off the letter while we're trying to get Chris back. I'm, I'm here. Sorry. I had it on mute. Ah, okay. that's what you did last time. I know. I figured you must have it on mute. I, you must be able to hear us. But uh, you sent me the last email. It said, Bill, there's a lot of information that uh, should be discussed. TEPCO's lack of skill in causing misoperation of the Advanced Liquid Processing System, or ALPS. Uh, and allowing contaminated water to flow unintended areas of the site. Also, a plastic tank ruptured released high concentrated water over the weekend. And of course, this is the next area, North Ann, and that's here in America. Dominion Power is performing a re-evaluation of the seismic analysis. That's in America. See article below. Last week, we discussed how the NRC is evaluating 60 seismic studies to determine how they will affect associated nuclear power plants in the U.S. Remember that the NRC has mentioned New Madrid fault line is is in its announcement. The WIP in New Mexico report released. I put a link in the message to, to page 187, 187 page report. So that's a waste, waste uh, processing plant, New Mexico, that uh, is basically a disaster site. And it's releasing it into the local area where hydrofracking is occurring and the water supply, and they vented off radiation into the open air, and we've got a lot of people very very radioactive. So uh, let's talk about these three issues and interpret these uh, PDFs. Okay, sure. I had a full start before, but yes, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Bill. So we were talking about uh, their lack of leadership and the def- definitely a lack of expertise in operating their own equipment that they're trying to come up with to keep the, uh, what's left of the cores cool and to reprocess the water and remove the uh, nuclides from it. And that's called the Advanced Liquid Processing System. Now, this is what happens when you lose the skill set of an operation, operating crew and you're relying on uh, people who don't really understand what they're doing. You have valve misalignment. That's a, that, that happens in the industry. It's a big deal. We, we don't like to have this happen. And apparently over the weekend, they pump water from the very highly radioactive water from the Advanced Liquid Processing System to an area that instead of it going to a storage tank where it should have gone, <clears throat> it ended up in a area that was not contaminated and now is contaminated. And that's, uh, so now they've just generated a whole massive amount of more waste due to a mistake. And uh, so once you start making mistakes like this, uh, and we already talked about where they had mistakes made in the uh, Unit 4 spent fuel pool, that could have been more serious than it was. Uh, that was a few weeks ago we had discussed that. So we're seeing a rash of mistakes, and sooner or later the wickets will line up where the mistakes will compound and the aggregate effect will be uh, an amplified result, and, and you'll get a bigger mistake than, uh, than you can handle. And so in, in, it's, it's in other not words, a little mistake add up to a, to a, uh, the, in other words, it's an exponential type of equation amplifier rather than a multiplicative or additional. So that the mistake becomes an exponential power is what you're saying. Exactly. And, and instead of it, instead of it dampening out and going to zero, no, it's the other way around as you, as you put it. So it becomes yeah. more of an exponential and sooner or later that something is going to, and that's what happens when you when you lose all of the skill sets of a, of a good operating crew and, and you end up uh, relying on uh, folks who don't fully understand not only what they're doing, but what effects it would have on what everybody else is doing. 
because there's a lot of stuff going on. You know, like a three-ring circus, you have people on the high wire and people with the dancing ponies and all kinds of things. If somebody makes a mistake, it doesn't just hurt one person. It could actually hurt people in other in other parts of it, and they're not looking, they're not stepping back and seeing the whole, I say the whole show, you know, put it put in that in those terms. And so that's that's uh, troubling to see. Right. Uh, they also, and by the uh, way, have they reevaluated in around North Japan the danger, just like they are doing here in America with the seismic studies, the danger of a major quake striking the Fukushima area and other plants that were damaged in OI and elsewhere on the North Island, Honshu, because the likelihood of a major quake now striking, which occurred a year before the Fukushima subduction quake and tsunami, is now exponentially higher. In other words, the one that just happened in Chile uh, is probably a foreshock of something bad that's going to happen on the other side of that bell called the Ring of Fire. Uh, have they reevaluated that or have they looked at that area? Because we know that reactor number one was actually destroyed not by the, uh, by the swamping of the, the generator. It was actually already damaged and containment was lost by the earthquake. There are other reactors, including storage tanks at OI, which were quite a distance away from the Fukushima area, that their storage tanks lost 440 gallons of, of highly radioactive water because they got a loss of containment there as well, which is quite a distance away just from the earthquake. So I think that we're going to be facing something far worse than just Fukushima alone with that mess not being properly managed. Uh, they don't even have their little robot working again, which to me, I, I came up with a few ideas of bringing another, you know, all you need to do is get a signal to that robot, and at least they had to get it extricated. But I don't have they done anything on the seismic analysis. I think in, uh, in the Tokyo in the TEPCO's uh, problem was that they knew that the seismic analysis was greater than what a plant could withstand, but they said that the probability was so low we we're just going to ignore that yeah. risk. Well, yeah, the and thing here, is, we're, well, my, my father worked well, as a I structural guess, structural. Uh, you know, a person that would go around to weld to test around heavy water plants, nuclear plants, etc. And you go and test to see what structurally integrity, integrity, the structural integrity. You can do an analysis and tell what are what's called the fail zones, uh, whether it's a, a, a gas plant or a pulp and paper mill or a nuclear heavy water plant or a nuclear reactor plant by going around all the welds, all the structural integrity and doing x-rays and saying ultrasound and x-rays will tell you where the place is going to break down. It's subsiding. It's leaking in this mush we call, I call it the nuclear radioactive waste. We don't have a report that I've seen of anybody saying these are all the welds, these are all the structural things, this is how much, the, how many centimeters of subsidence is occurring on which corner of which building. These are the areas where we're seeing failure of the various welds and joints and so on. I don't see any reports whatsoever on the structural integrity of what's going on in Fukushima. None. And that means that they have no idea what's going to fail first and where it'll fail. You mentioned before, Chris, the the seal at the bottom of the cooling pool, if that goes, there's no repair at all. They, they don't even have an idea what to do to stop it from leaking. And the entire cool, cooling pool fuel rod assemblies there, which they removed a pile of them, are likely to just uh, to go into a pyrophoric fire. So they have removed 616 of the assemblies out of 1,331, and the unirradiated uh, 22 assemblies out of 202, and the number of casks transported 29 times. It would transfer casks. Where are they transferring them to? I don't know. But uh, these structural issues, to me, tell me that they're moving too slow. There's areas that are going to be impossible to fix. There's areas where they can't even get in reactor one, two, and three. But there's no idea what the structural integrity is and what level of earthquake will cause them to fall down and lose all containment, all control, and have either nuclear criticality or uh, a major venting from a pyrophoric fire of radiation. Yeah, that's, so when we that's come back, correct. Maybe you know. can think about the answers to those questions, because the more I see, the more questions it raises to me about Fukushima. I think the movie that's coming out called, called Godzilla needs to be renamed Fukushima Zilla. Back in a moment. And welcome back, and... Uh, um, Chrissy, um, let's let's move over to the issue of seismic issues in Japan. Um, with my background in physics and metallurgy, etc., and I, I, here's what I would say: if you want to test, you got to test every weld with ultrasound and X-ray. You have to know the number of joules necessary to cause what's called metal fatigue and a crystal break. If you know that joule threshold, 
and you come in at about 20 to 25% because there's going to be an error range. If it crosses that error range where a probable break will occur and then will increase the stress on other adjacent joints, you have to say that if the weak link theory, which means is the weakest joint is the one that's going to blow, you can then do an analysis of that using computer simulations, and you can determine if you have a certain kind of earthquake, what's likely to cause structural failure of some site, part of that site. What I'm trying to say here is no one that I've known of has actually put together what's called a structural failure model that does computer simulations of real-world data that you can get from looking at uh, structural integrity of welds and the crystal structure that's caused by neutron annealing, subsidence, or just age of the site. And you don't just have metal. You have other things like these uh, boronated rubber seals that are at the bottom of the cooling pool. You have other weak points. And uh, if those are all put in the model, uh, the level of earthquake, I, my guess is, is going to be considerably lower to cause structural failure at Fukushima, the same as in America, like at the New Madrid fault system, where there's 25 reactor sites, some with more than one reactor, within strike distance of New Madrid that has similar technology to these boiling water reactors or steam turbine generators. Uh, this is just stupid. And if you start asking scientific questions, nuclear questions, metallurgy questions, seismic questions, what you realize is you cross over the lines of the likelihood of a major quake that is too high to cause a major structural failure, along with the radiation release. I don't even see proper plans to evacuate the people of Tokyo and greater Tokyo area. I see the Abe government sending back pregnant women and saying, if you're pregnant, we'll give you a free home. I see them sending back people and saying, we're going to cut off your benefits, so go back home, go play outside, and uh, don't mind your uh, eating the rice that's been raised in areas that are radioactive. They're sending back people to their death and telling it's a good thing to move the trash all over Japan and burn it in their high temperature incinerators so that everybody gets at least a little dose of Fukushima radiation. So is, there, is anybody doing a structural model analysis or computer simulations to figure out what could happen at Fukushima or any of our reactors here in America near Diablo Canyon, which is three fault lines that intersect? San Onofre, which, by the way, still has a ton of nuclear material on site <clears throat> that is right near the San Jacinta Opsaraz zone that's only six miles off the coast, not 75 or 80 like it was off Fukushima. Do they have anybody doing any computer analysis and reporting within the Nuclear Regulatory Commission or a subcontractor that gives any idea that they know how to test structural engineering material on site and then find out if it actually is likely to fail at a certain fail rate if a certain challenge happens? Well, what you said before about the weakest link is absolutely correct. And yes, there are models that have already been generated. And yes, you have to know not only what will fail first in the presence of the design earthquake, but also what are the consequences of that failure. And, and, and from that, you can make a decision as to how bad it would be and what you would need to do to cope with such, uh, such an uh, event. But here's the, here's the thing. We said that they also got seismic re-evaluations going on. And just because now that you think you're good because your models are baked, you feed in the data. You say, oh, I can only get a 0.5 uh, G acceleration in the X and Y axis uh, due to a seismic activity. And therefore, my, my buildings are designed to exceed that by a, by a margin. But now if we find out that the new analysis says, hey, wait a minute, it's point eight or higher. Now right. all of a sudden, what do you? What now? Now all of a sudden, you're out in uncharted territory, and you're absolutely correct. It would have to be there'd be very expensive reevaluation and very expensive modifications to be made if needed, and, and that that's going to make a major impact when these reports also, come out that are being reviewed. It also impacts on the fact that it's also the Tokyo on the coast. They're reactivating publicly a lot of these reactors. One is a mixed oxygen fuel breeder reactor to create plutonium for nuclear warheads or mixed oxygen fuel pellets <clears throat> which are extremely unstable that are hotter and the radioactive waste is incredibly unstable and dangerous as hell and uh, the Japanese are proceeding like a madman literally as I say ready to release uh, Godzilla on the Chinese because they're preparing for a nuclear World War III we need to face that we deal with crazy people that the Um Shunrikyo cult and which is the death cult, and Prime Minister Abe is a member. Not good.
Um, no, I, I definitely sent you those two articles. Not only was the MOX plant full speed ahead being constructed, but also the breeder reactor, as you had said. Yep. Now, let's go on uh, to the I, WIP I, uh, situation, the WIP situation in Mex- New Mexico. The government and the regular, quote, media, I call mediums, they're trying to put everybody to sleep, rocking them to sleep in the rocking chair of MSNBC, the Cartoon Network News from CNN, the False News Network of Fox, which is the best of the worst of these maniacs. The worst is MSNBC. Uh, what's happening at WIP? Because this is our Fukushima, in a sense, right now, warning us that the nuclear age should be over, but we're not preparing for that. Replacing with new advanced technology or liquefied natural gas turbines, which would make these nuclear reactors safer, getting all this radioactive waste either in cooling pools or in containers off-site. I don't see any moves to actually certify a place in America or elsewhere, like in a tin mine, to get all this nuclear waste off-of-site. Like in San Onofre, people think it's shut down. I talked to people and said, do you think it's shut down? Oh, yeah, it's gone. I said, no, they have to have staff to maintain it. And all that radioactive waste for the past 55-plus years is just sitting there. It's oh, pretty absolutely. stupid. If you, if you, yeah, <clears throat> if you lose cooling at San Onofre, it's just as bad as anything else. So, uh, yeah, right. they're circulating water through the plant right now to keep the core cool. Uh, just one thing about about WIP, you know, I haven't gone through the whole 187-day report. A friend of mine from one of the national labs sent that to me. It's pretty right. much hot off the press. And yeah. uh, there's some it's, it's, it's startling pictures of the truck fire and stuff in there, and I want you to take a look at that. And, okay, here's, uh, the, here's the three they, questions I'd ask you, if you may or may not have answers now or next week. Number one, did they have a roof fall or floor fall or both? That's number one. Number two, was there venting or radioisotopes and what was the profile? And number three, how many people that were workers or local citizens got exposed either directly through water contamination, air contamination, or now radioactive fuel or hydrocarbons that are being removed from the ground by hydrofracking that make the entire area radioactive? Do you have answers to any of those? Right now, I do not have any answers to all of those. Like I said, Mm -hmm. uh, we'll work on it. By next week, we'll have some more review report in the meantime. You can call me even over the weekend, and what I'll do is I'll put up a live stream, kind of abbreviated yep. report. I can pull up the actual report, and we can do that. So people that listen to Nutramedical, you can go on live stream through our links. And by the way, if you're a customer, you get free access. If you're not, you don't get access at all. Too bad. So sad. You have to be a customer. Oh. Even one bottle would make you a customer. But if you aren't, you don't get access. You don't have to pay a fee, but you don't get access unless you support what we do. Uh, and what, what's going to happen in America? The next thing is... We have all these yep. sites. <clears throat> I would say the chances of a major earthquake, and we're seeing earthquakes literally all over the place. In fact, we're going to have Ann Morrison on tomorrow talking about the big earthquakes that are occurring. In fact, when I looked at the reports from Ann, uh, she was on uh, John Ma- and were on their show this morning, and the reporters of other major earthquakes around the world are like earthquakes and volcanic activity are increasing everywhere, including Yellowstone. I think the chances of a major quake happening in a nuclear site in America is unusually high. Um, you know. Well, uh, uh, that that um, that NRC news release or that, that release did mention uh, the New Madrid fault line again, and so they're looking at it. And number two, uh, a uh, a good researcher, I don't laugh, is goes by the name Fred Sir in, in the Wake Up Project, told me uh, it's such a sense put out a. Uh, a YouTube, and I just looked at it, is USGS installed new seismic monitors at Yellowstone, and they're warning people to have extra food and stuff. <laughs> the seismic well, the animals are running away. Yeah, and you yeah. know, but by the way, that Yellowstone area is an area where the they're hydrofracking. So the energy is pent up. The hydrofracking is releasing a lot of the energy, so it's not a big surprise that they're creating a disaster. Department of Mines back in the <clears throat> early 70s did that in Colorado. They stimulated a 4.3 earthquake in Boulder by just putting water in the fall mine. Just pumping water into it. Real, real, real stupid. Thank you, Chris Harris. Amazing updates. I'll be on hour two tonight on rents with that and much more. Back tomorrow with Firing Line. Get your questions into Michelle. <laughs>